Good morning to all of you, dear brothers and sisters, in this blessed day, the day of the Lord. May God be with us all, all the days of our life, especially when we have a lot of maybe hard time during the week, when we go through sometimes trouble or crisis. Sunday is the best time because when we come to the church, I feel like sometimes at the end of the day, my cell phone gave me warning. The battery is almost going to be died and the cell phone will going to be turned off. So the minute I put the cell phone on the charger, right away I see this green light, which is a new life, a new power. This is what happened to us when we come to the church on Sunday. We charge our spirit, we charge our soul, we clean our sense, we clean our thoughts. So pretty much when we are going to leave the church, we have extra power, we have strength, spiritual strength, so we can go to face the trouble, the crisis, the hardship, we can face it with goodwill, with a strong spirit and soul, so we can go over our hard time that we go during the week. So that's why to thank God for the Sunday, for the Mass, it's something very, very important. And during the week, usually, we ask ourselves, this is what the Lord was talking with the disciples and the people when he was talking about how much they should be aware or careful from the teaching of the Pharisees. And then they were asking themselves, they say, we don't have bread. Why the Lord talking about the yeast? And he was talking about the teaching of the Pharisees, as I just mentioned. Then the Lord, he said in verse 8 and 9, but Jesus being aware of it, of what they said, and he said to them, O you of little faith, why do you re reason among yourselves because you have brought no bread? He was asking why you were thinking, why you thinking and talking to each other that you don't have a bread. Then he continued, he said, do you not yet understand or remember the five loaves of 5,000 and how many baskets you took up? So pretty much the Lord, he brought to their attention the blessing that he did in their life. And today, I feel like this verse, verse 8 and 9, it's a straightforward message, personal message to every and each one of us, to me and to you. Why it's a personal message? Because the Lord talking to you. We all go through hard time in this life. We all have needs. We all sometimes struggle and we feel like certain area in our life, the door is closed. And the question, and this is the thought and the message that the Lord today, he is talking to every one of you. It's a personal message. It's a question, this message. It says, is God really able to meet our needs? In other words, is our God, our Savior, able to give the needy one, me, you, every one of us, different variety of needs. Is our Lord is able to give the needy one all their needs or to answer all their questions? This pretty much, it gives us hard time when, especially when we struggle praying for something or work hard for something or maybe plan very good for something to achieve it, yet we don't maybe get it right away. We don't receive it right away. 
So it's very hard to maybe talk about the Lord is able, the Lord is strong, the Lord is almighty, but to come to the reality, sometimes we struggle. As I just mentioned, it's hard to talk about it, especially when I face, when I suffer from any kind of trouble. For example, if I have maybe financial need, for example, if my son is sick and I cannot take care of him, or if my family needs something, or I cannot maybe do the payment, my monthly payment, house, expenses, credit, all kind of expenses that I have. If I cannot maybe do it, or I, I am not maybe affordable, I cannot maybe do it. Or the stronger trouble when I have maybe physical issues. Somebody dear to my heart, family member, he's going through hard phys physical problem, sickness for God bed, or disease. Or if I have a pray for something to receive, I want to get married. I want to have kids. And I don't get this. And sometimes it's emotional problem or trouble, sometimes social. Some family, they have trouble or problem or they don't talk to each other. When I have this trouble in my life and I pray, yet I don't receive, I think it's easy to talk about God is able from one side and from another side, there is nothing happen on the real life. And what also make it sometimes harder, when I feel there is no blessing in my life, no matter what I do, at the end of the day, my hands are empty. I don't have enough, maybe, money to uh, support myself or my family. Or I am very weak to help dear one or close or member family who is going through hard time. Sometimes some family, they lose dear one. What can you talk to those people? It's very hard. So sometimes we feel we are not blessed in our life. Whatever I do goes wrong direction. It doesn't go in the right way. And the hardest for me, when some people, they have all these things, all the blessing, yet they feel they are not blessed. So it's not that you don't have or you don't receive what you are asking for or you pray for or you wish to, but when you do, but you don't feel you are blessed. Those people, they always underestimate themselves. I'm not good. And I face this thing in my pastoral life a lot. People, they call me, Abuna, whatever I do doesn't go right in my life. What do you mean? Well, he tell me stories. In my heart, maybe this story is so hard. It's in my life, I think, do you know that some people, maybe they don't have legs, they still survive and they still smile? Do you know that maybe some people, they don't have, at the end of the day, to put food in the table for their kids or for their families. Do you know there is some diseases is very hard and people they suffer from it 24 seven. Believe me, I meet people in hospitals, people sick. They say, Abuna, we wish to die every single second because the pain, the trouble, it's always, it's always on while I pray to have certain kind of car or certain area to buy house or to go certain place for vacation. If I don't do it, I will be depressed. And God is not able. He cannot give me whatever I want. So this is, I think, what's going to make sometimes our relationship with God is even harder. But I want you to remember always, dear brothers and sisters, that God is love. God cares. God able 
and mighty. God knows what are you going through and God wants. He has good will. And what I just said, it's all from the Bible that God is love, able, knows, mighty, can. He wants the good things for you. All these are from the Bible. You know what's the problem? It's not that God is not able. The problem is that I don't believe that he is good and he can do things in my life. A lot of time when I pray for something, if I don't receive it, I used to get mad. But later on, I find out that before I pray for anything that God to give me, I have to pray that if God will talk to me, I will listen to him and I will say, yes, Lord, I will accept. Because when we go to God, we have always agenda. We have list. And we want God to bless this agenda and to, to do it as it is, in very detail. If he missed something, well, he's not answering me. While God is answering, God is talking, God is always there for us, but we are not always there to accept what he wants. For example, if I will pray for myself to, let's say, buy a house, I want certain kind of house to be big, to be I don't know what, certain area. If I cannot get this, my dream house, the same area or the same maybe features or option that I want, I get it somewhere else, I will be so depressed. But do you know how many people they don't have houses even? Do you know how many people they sleep outside? I was in California almost two months ago visiting my family there. I saw hundreds of homeless. We hear and we see a lot of time in the news. We used to talk about these things in poor area or you know, in Africa, but now it happened to our people, our families, our maybe friends in back home in the Middle East. People, they stay four or five months without running water or power. I remember I was talking with my friend. He said, Abun, I forget what the power means. We didn't have it long time ago. So God is able. God can answer. But do we really want to hear what he want to say? So I have always to remember that God is always good to me. And he always give me a good experience and testimony. But unfortunately, I forget all that when he doesn't answer one single thing. It doesn't matter how big or small this a question. That's why we have to remember when we read the Bible, especially, I encourage you to read the Bible. Why? Because when you read the Bible, you see his people in the wilderness for 40 years. Not one day, not one week, not one month, one, not one year, 10 years, 40 years. He was giving them a food every single day. He did not even miss one day. And not only that, he told them, every day you have to collect the food. He used to give them the manna. And do not save or store food from one day to another day because it's going to go waste. But only day you can save food, it was for the Sabbath, for the day of the Lord, because God didn't want them to work, rather to sit and worship God so they don't worry even about the food. So can you imagine how much God cares for his people? And unfortunately, some of us, we say, God doesn't love me. God doesn't take care of me. He only loves this people and that people. Let me tell you, this is not from God. This is from evil. Because God loves all the people, everyone. So we have to read the Bible to remember what he say in his book. How much he was taking care of every single. David, the king, he said, the young lions lack and suffer hunger. You know the lion, we call, we call him the king of the jungle. 
even his kids, the lion, the king of the jungle, his kids will suffer from the hunger. They will go through hard time. But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good things. So those who really suck, seek, sorry, and knock the door of the Lord, they will never ever lack any good things. Not bad things, even the good things. Somewhere else, he's saying kind of statement of his life, David. He said, and I want you to pay attention for this verse, it's in Psalm 37. He said, I have been young and now I am old. He's saying, I went through very kind of trouble and problem and war and fight. And I went through all of kind of things that you can imagine. Yet, he's saying, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descent's big break. He said, I never saw anyone who really trusts the Lord that these people will be lacking anything. Rather, the Lord, he will always be taking care of him. That's in the Old Testament. Sometimes you say, well, Abuna in the New Testament. The Lord himself, he was using, quoting two very important miracles. When he multiplied the braids and the fish twice, one time he fed 5,000, one time he fed 4,000. He's saying to the, his disciples and the people, say, don't you remember these miracles? How much I was taking care of you in the middle of nowhere in the wilderness, and I bless this little food, and I make it abundant for all those thousands. And not only that, there was extra food left over, yet some people, they still asking, like the people of the Old Testament in Psalm 78, when they were asking, can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Can God, when I feel like I am in the middle of nowhere in my life, wilderness, it doesn't mean wilderness, desert, somewhere outside where there is nobody or no, nothing. It, doesn't, it, it does mean when I live in wilderness, when my heart going nowhere, is God able to prepare a table which is to satisfy me, to answer me? The Bible saying, yes, this is what Jesus said. He said, why are you talking among self? Why are you thinking this way? Rather, you remember what I had done to you. But the biggest, maybe, gift or grace God gave to every one of us when he died on the cross, when he laid his life on the cross to save you and to save me. We are all called to experience the mercies, the graces of God. This is what St. Paul said, and he said, God is able to make all the grace abundant toward you, toward every one of us. And he said in a uh, letter to Philippians, he said, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So God is not going to give you up to your knowledge, up to your limit. He is going to give you, to answer you, up to his riches in glory. And God is so rich in his glory. I pray that all of us, we can understand. I can tell you a lot of times, a lot of very personal experience. That's why I say this sermon, it's to every one of us, it's a very personal message. Is really able God, or is God really able to meet our needs? I remember one time when I was serving in the beginning of my life as a priest, I came to, I was in San Diego, but I didn't know nothing. I wasn't able to speak at all English. I was middle of nowhere for me. Even I was in the middle of big community, but I didn't know. I had no car, no cell phone, no any communication device, and I didn't know nobody. That was exactly. And I didn't have food. 
imagine somebody in the United States, he's, he, he suffers from lack of food. And we know maybe this country is the most country they throw food. And I remember it was the Lent, the great Lent, when we fast 50 days. And I was asking myself, what should I eat? I don't have food. Should I fast? Should I not? And I was really struggling almost for a week. And I said, you know, I will go to the archdiocese. I will stay with the bishop because I don't have food. And I have to fast on top of that. I only need food. How am I going to be picky, you know, pick fast food or fasting food or just regular food? Believe me, the first day in the late, it was Monday, a woman from the church, she came to where I was living. She said, Abuna, I know you don't know anything. You are new in this country. I made some fasting food for you. I was uh, crying, not because she brought me food, but because I doubt that God can take care of me. I asked one of the parishioners to bring me some food, ready food such as, you know, hummus, tuna, things, so I can eat it. I don't have to cook food or something. Believe me, from day one to the last day and that experience, I will never ever forget it. For 50 days, I never ever touched the food that this person he brought to me. Every single day, every single week, people, they used to bring me fast food. And sometimes on Sunday, they say, Abuna, we're going to make food for you. What do you like? I tell them whatever. They say, no, 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 Abuna, we're going to cook for you. What do you want we're going to be bring for you next week? So not only God taking care of me, but he was always giving me an option to choose what I want to eat. I think the food, the physical food is nothing, but the spiritual food is very important. And this is what God was talking to his disciples. Why you are worried about the food or the bread, the physical bread? Be aware of the bad bread, bad yeast, who's going to destroy your thought. In other words, hold the Lord and he will satisfy you. He will meet your needs. He will answer all your questions and don't allow the evil one to maybe destroy your faith and make you little person in the faith. May God bless you all and protect you all with the prayer of ever Virgin Mary in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen.